Let's talk about Hunt Showdown's 1.6.2 update coming to test servers soon. The first thing they talked about was matchmaking changes for the SBMM disabled. Uh, basically, they improved wait times if you have skill-based matchmaking turned off. That's about it. If you are a player that is not quite rank 100 on your first prestige, you can no longer turn off skill-based matchmaking. They just want to keep it fair. So now for the more exciting portion of the update, they added some new variants to the Vetterly, starting with the Vetterly Marksman. It comes with a Marksman scope, obviously, as the name suggests, and it will cost 190 hunt dollars. Here's the clip of it in action. So uh, this is just some normal gameplay of uh, how you can experience it and how it feels, how it looks exactly when you're using it in game. So they want the Vetterly Marksman to be a more aggressive Marksman weapon. Also very exciting is the Vetterly Suppressed Weapon, or as they call it, the Vetterly Silenced. It's a suppressed version of the Vetterly. Still medium ammo, slightly lower uh, muzzle velocity. It costs 150 hunt dollars. Interesting for the Vetterly Suppressed, it has different sights compared to the base Vetterly. And I think that's going to help this be a competitive option. One addition to the Vetterly is Vetterly High Velocity Custom Ammo. Obviously, increased bullet velocity, slightly increased recoil, and it costs $95. The dev said with this custom ammo, the Vetterly can have a muzzle velocity that's actually higher than the Centennial. Another weapon variant is the Labelle Aperture. It comes with a peephole sight that can be switched. It costs $425. The dev said this Aperture variant makes a lot more sense than, say, the Winfield Aperture, because with long ammo, you actually can choose if you want to fight up close or at range. And they showed some clips. Here's that. Also exciting is the new Scottfield Model 3 Revolver. It's a small slot, medium ammo. It's unlocked at rank one. It has a six round capacity. It's a break open action revolver. It has a quicker reload speed than the PAX does. I think the dev said the Scottfield Model 3 can be reloaded in nine seconds compared to 11 seconds on the PAX. However, comparing it to the PAX, slightly lower stopping power, fire rate, and range. It's meant to be sort of the first medium pistol you get instead of the PAX. They talked about these different reload animations and how they change depending on how many bullets you have used. Interesting with the Scott Field, it does have full metal jacket custom ammo and incendiary custom ammo. It can be used dual wielded. So I expect we will see more of those popping up, especially with its quicker reload speed. And it can also be used with fanning. They also talked about the Dragon Breath custom ammo. So now with Dragon Breath, the damage is slightly increased and its effective range depends on the length of the barrel of the shotgun you are using. So if you're using the Romero, you'll have more effective range than say the Romero hand cannon. They also increase the speed of levering on the Winfield Terminus. Not much of a change, but maybe the people using that will enjoy that, I don't know. This change, I think, is going to be rather controversial. They're adding a new consumable, the Health Regeneration Shot. And, I mean, it does exactly what the name suggests. It increases your health regeneration. Uh, it will not heal a burned out health chunk. So if you've been downed and you get revived, it's not going to help you get a chunk back or anything. Uh, the dev said it is slower than your natural health regeneration. It's 2.5 health points per second instead of the usual 5. Um, but it does not stop at chunked areas. So if you are at 2 health points and you just wait for that regeneration, you can actually heal all the way to whatever your full health is at the time. There are two versions of the shot. There is the weak five minute version and the full 10 minute version. That means during those five and 10 minutes, you will have this extra health regeneration that activates after you take damage. And then they have the other changes section. So 
These are just balance changes following the Light the Shadow event. They took a look at the crossbow, the hand crossbow, and the bow and arrow, and they want these to have their own lanes. So with the crossbow, it has a strong bleeding effect. They increased its effective range, stronger against armored, and it has more bolts than it did before, an increase on the standard from 6 to 9. With a hand crossbow, it does medium bleeding. It has a small range increase, and it has more bolts. They said this change will be the least noticeable, but it is there. And then for the bow and arrow, they want the bow to be a faster alternative to the crossbow that doesn't hit quite as hard. So the bow causes medium bleeding. They changed some of the hit detection on limbs to make it more accurate in that feedback. And they increased the sway. So now if you hold a bow shot too long, the bow will start to sway a lot more. We also have some trait changes. The 100 hands perk is reduced from 25% to 10%. Bolt thrower cost reduced from 4 to 3. And then bolt seer is renamed to blade seer because you can see axes, you can see throwing knives. It applies to much more than just bolts. The poacher perk cost reduced from 2 to 1. They said they just want more 1 point perks at the moment. And it sounds like they're going to be revisiting that subject. Other changes. I think this one is going to be significant. The firebomb burn time increased to two minutes and they changed the particle effects with it. So now the firebomb can be used as a pretty effective smoke bomb. And this is just the base one. It's not the hell firebomb. I'm interested to see what that's going to do and how that will affect people bringing choke bombs. The terminus levering fire rate is increased. The weak stamina shot duration increased to five minutes or 300 seconds. That's just to bring it in line with the weak health regeneration shot. The Caldwell Pax was moved from rank 10 to rank 18. That's to give the Scott Field a little room to be used. And then they also changed the Caldwell Rival being unlocked from rank 18 to rank 10. I know the medium ammo boys are going to be excited about this. The Centennial extra ammo has been increased from 8 to 12. That's only 4 bullets, but that's, you know... A 50% increase so that could be good for the nitro dum-dum consistency changes they just made it to where the dum-dum ammo on the nitro express rifle actually does full damage poison ammo hit feedback with active antidote shot they showed a clip of this basically if you have an antidote shot and you've used it on yourself and you get hit with a poison ammo they show you that you've been hit uh, but it still doesn't apply to you with that antidote this one I think is going to be smaller. Collectible projectiles deal damage when removed. That means if you throw an axe at an armored and then you retrieve that axe from the armored, when you retrieve the axe, it will actually do damage. They also changed the Red Skull Revive read ability. So now there is an icon. If you are carrying the bounty and your teammate should be Red Skulled, you have this new icon that shows you your teammate can be revived. There's also 30 more hunter slots available. So all you people maxing out all your hunter slots, you now have 30 more to do. Let's get on to the price changes where I think the most important of these is the Nagant Officer is being increased from $66 to $9,600. I like this change because the Nagant Officer is basically one of the best pistols in game and this should be reflected in the price, which I think it is. Uh, you know, I might have even gone higher than they did, but interesting. Also, the Centennial, thank God, is being reduced in price almost half from $277 to $157. It's more affordable and it's more comparable to the Viterli, which I think will make it a more competitive choice now. Let's talk about consumables. The weak stamina shot was increased from $10 to $60. I know a lot of people run stamina and antidote shots to just cancel out those problems so now it is much more of a consideration if you are going to use those shots they went in and tweaked some of the lobby animation changes this is small i'm not going to talk about it much but they made them more true to the hunt style they also have two new legendary items coming to the store the bird of prey for the terminus hand cannon and the 
wormwood skin for the Mosin Nagant. Another Mosin Nagant skin. Very cool. So that's about it for the changes coming in update 1.6.2. My thoughts, I'm really excited to see what the the Turley silencer is going to be like. I think it'll be a good alternative to the Sparks suppressed instead of the Winfield. I'm worried about what the regeneration shot will do to gunfights, but I also think I'll be using it, so maybe I'll enjoy the benefits more than the hardships of trying to kill the guy that you just can't kill. Um, the LaBelle aperture seems exciting. I'm not really sure how many people are going to use it, but it does seem a lot more useful than the Winfield aperture. If you follow me on Reddit, you might have seen that I asked the sub what type of weapon they wanted to be added next. With 3,000 votes, a new pistol accounted for 17%, so I would say that's a pretty good pick for a majority of the community. I know it's not the majority of the vote, but I think people are just excited to get a new gun. I'm interested to see if they will be satisfied with this gun or wish it would have been something different. Also interesting about that poll, a combination gun is still highly requested. I know a lot of people want to see the Lamat Carbine. I'm not sure they're ever going to add it, but maybe one day. Anyway, so that is the full breakdown of 1.6.2. Let me know what change you are most excited for. I think we are in for a little bit of a meta shift here, and that's pretty exciting because the current one is getting old.